So you might have noticed that I don't, quite a lot of my um, live at fires feature a parrot. Maybe I'll let's just try it. Get off the coffee. The coffee's not good for them. Okay, features a parrot. Yes, this is your new teacher for the day. Purple guy's quite new to us. I'm going to start off with a parrot joke. It's not a very good joke. Why do pirates wear eye patches? Said no one ever who owned a parrot. There we are. Oh, yes. Um, yes, Popple Guy is uh, my new project. Um, Popple Guy came along um, for my birthday, which is nice. I've always wanted a parrot. And there we go. And so now we've got one. Look at that. If I just pop that there, we can get a better, a better amount of light, Popple Guy. So I've never had a parrot before. I don't know much about them. Well, I'm, I'm learning. But of course, Popple Guy likes to sit on my shoulder most of the time. And then you've got this huge beak. See this huge beak? Mostly beak. With a great big hook on it, sitting by my eye. Of course, never work with children and animals. It's not going to sit by my eye now. Are you getting up on my shoulder or not? I'd do a little sideways walk there. So, as part of learning about macaws, I went onto the macaw um, websites and, and Facebook pages. Hi, everybody. Um, Alison, Nikki, hello, thank you for joining this early in the morning. So yes, Popper Guy is my new new project. I need to know um, all the safety aspects of, of owning a parrot and keeping your eyes and your ears and everything else. I went onto the Macaw Facebook pages and found that quite a lot of people have the same problems that they have with horses, that they're scared of these massive beaks and it's hello, and it's absolutely heartbreaking when you've got these macaws all bobbing around wanting attention, and people are too scared to to pick them up and cuddle them and love them and what have you. So I'm quite new to macaws, so I don't think I'll be doing the macaw confidence course quite yet because I don't know the physical um, exercises that you need to do to make sure that you're safe. If that makes sense. I do know them with horses. Oh, you're going to go and see the camera again. <laughs> you're putting me off the video. I do know them with horses. I know the safety aspects and I know the mental um, processes that we need to engage in order to enjoy our horses. I understand the mental processes because they're the same across the board, whatever you want to enjoy. If you want to enjoy your macaws, um, the same mental processes are transferable to different skills throughout throughout the world. Um, whatever you do, wherever you are, there are certain ways of dealing with dangers, like big beaks, or like horses, or like boats, or like Antarctic exploration, um, or chainsaws. On my Rider Confidence course, I, I speak a lot about chainsaws. There's... Um, I'll start again. Dealing with danger is a mindset, but you have to think to yourself, when did you last learn to deal with something that is potentially extremely dangerous? And it's up to you to make sure it isn't dangerous. Currently, I'm on a parrot. The last time most people, apart from their horses, dealt with something that is potentially very dangerous, uh, was when they learned to drive a car. When you learn to drive a car, the potential for danger is enormous. Therefore, you employ the mental processes that you need to do to make sure that you just drive across the roundabouts and see your mum and it's all perfectly normal. That's life, isn't it? If you were to learn something else, something other than horses, but, but with intrinsic dangers, you would employ the same confident strategies to be able to do that. I often use the example of chainsaws. Chainsaws, if I, um, my first experience with horses was uh, pulling trees out of the woods. I was a chainsaw operator and the boys came out with the horses and they were all pulling, pulling the trees with these little fell ponies and it was just marvellous, brilliant. And um, so I, I know chainsaws and if you don't work with chainsaws, you might not be aware that there's 12 different points of safety on a chainsaw that makes them as safe as they can be. And 
this point, I don't want to say that I'm the kind of person that goes around saying, oh yeah, well, everything's safe, everything's safe, cars are safe, chainsaws are safe, horses are safe, parrots are safe, big beaks are safe. Some things are dangerous, and the level of danger goes up. So I don't go around saying everything's safe, but when you employ the correct safety mechanisms, such as with horses, learning to fall, learning to cope with rears, um, doing your, your research with, with parrots, I'll let you know in a month with chainsaws, it's knowing those safety features and how they work. With cars, it's learning how to do your emergency stops and how to use your mirrors properly and how to take account of all the different traffic on the road. Those same safety features that you can learn to use with your confidence strategies in, in that sphere are the same. They are transferred to another sphere. So if you're having problems with your horse, there is another sphere of your life, driving or what you do for work or whatever, which is transferable. So I would recommend that people learn new skills with new dangers. This is mine, isn't it? Maybe if you, you haven't done a chainsaw course, go and do a chainsaw course or do a sailing course, or do a course where you have to take control of the situation. When you think about that, what you're doing is raising your personality as a controller of a situation, as someone who's on top of the situation. And if you do that with chainsaws, and if you do that with boats, and if you do that with cars, and if you do that with parrots, you can also engage that with your horses. Let me give an example. I got taught to ride by a, a proper old school lady, proper shouting heels down and all, all. Yeah, real old school. She was so confident. She took absolutely no rubbish from any horses. She was absolutely on it. And she drove in the same way. When she got to a roundabout, she was like, you can stay there, you can stay there, I'm going here. And she was absolutely on that as well. Everybody did what she said. She was about 106, and it was absolutely marvellous. We came down to the stables. <laughs> came down to the stables one day, and I don't know how, but she got hold of a shotgun. <laughs> And she was clay shooting in, in the back of the field. And it was with exactly the same attitude. Of course it was, because that was her personality. We can access those points. This is what I'm doing with the parrot now. I'm accessing the same confidence strategies that I use with horses. I need the information. And it's the same for business and everything else. Uh, th those of you who work with um, computers and such like, that throws me quite a lot. I have to learn a lot. Um, I've, found, I've gone and found the help and the, the people who can help me um, and, and learnt those processes. So, for example, I've got a friend, Carl Pate. Carl Pate has, is, um, a, a, he will help you start a business. He, he talks a lot about productivity. He can help you in any part of, of that area of life that you might be interested in. He's written a book called Making Shit Happen. It's not actually called Making Shit Happen. It's Making Shit Happen. Uh, it's a, a brilliant read. The reason why I'm, I'm such friends with him is because he launched his book at the same time I launched my book. And I've been watching this parallel go. And the other reason I like him is because he's got a very bald head. <laughs> there we are. But by watching him in his sphere and his confidence, and also by reading his book, which, which has really helped me launch mine, um, and watching what I do, this is how parallels can be seen across the board. Um, so for example, there is a lady, Linda, 
and I am so pleased about this. I've mentioned her before. She was frightened of motorway bridges. I got a message yesterday. I am so pleased, so pleased to get this message, including the photograph of Linda going across the bridge and thoroughly enjoying it, thoroughly enjoying the excitement, even enjoying the fear, getting across and then putting the, the, the post and sending me the message of that she was clearly absolutely delighted that she'd got this horse to go across a motorway bridge. It was absolutely fabulous. She now has that as an example. So when she next comes scared of the next situation, she'll remember how she dealt with the motorway bridge and use those same abilities. That's right, isn't it, little guy? Yes, it is. So, I've got my own areas, obviously, where I'm not so confident, which perhaps you would be super confident, such as um, Carl's super confident in his business, which is why I mentioned him. Um, an a example that I, I love to use, I don't have children, so I'm obviously one of those people where you hand them a baby and they're like, oh, and uh, toddlers, can't do toddlers. I saw a documentary once about it when I was younger. There was this toddler and it had 666 tattooed in its head and it killed everybody. And uh, it, it got on a tricycle and it knocked a lady off a balcony and it killed the priest. And oh, awful. That's why I don't do toddlers. Those of you that work with toddlers <laughs> always saying, what's his problem? What's his problem with babies and toddlers? They're just not what I do. If I suddenly ended up with a job with babies and toddlers, I'd come to you for help. But I'd employ the same confidence strategies. There's always something that you're confident in. You're confident in business. You're confident with working with children. You're confident with working with finances. You're confident working in care, working in, in hospitals, in education. There's always something that you are that controller in. And I'm really interested in how to transfer that to other people. And that's what we do. Um, yeah, so do something that is new and exciting and scary and requires you to take care of yourself. I can recommend chainsaw courses because I've, I've done one. And until you've done one... <laughs> You don't know there's 12 points of safety on a chainsaw. Um, I would recommend choosing physical things because horse riding is a physical thing and we need to be able to transfer that. So there we go. If you've been following my page at all, you might have noticed that I've started putting on more stuff that's just happening around the yard. We had tough mudder here the other day and um, I put on a bit of trick riding training the other day. We're going to Russia soon. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? We're going to Russia very soon, in about 10 days. So we're practicing a lot. It's a lot of fun. We've got to do a weapons course where you use your lance and then you throw your lance like a javelin and then you've got your gun and you've got to shoot some balloons and you've got to put your gun back in your pocket and then you've got to pick out your knife and you've got to throw your knife into the board and then you've got to pick out your sword and you've got to cut to the left, cut to the right, cut up, cut, up, cut down, pick up a ring. Jump your horse over a jump and then you've completed the course. That's one part of it. Another part is the is the um, the archery, the horseback archery, which we we teach here. And then another part is the gymnastics on horseback. And so we're training and we're having a lot of interaction and a lot of fun. Plus we're doing our courses. Plus we've got tough mudder happening here. And I'm trying to put this more and more on my page so people can just see us having fun as normal people not super super instructors or or anything special we're just having fun with our horses doing our normal things and bring you into my world a little bit and how much that that you can just enjoy your horse and they're capable of so much more so that's why I'm doing that. If you've been wondering, hang on, why is he, why is he suddenly showing us loads of stuff around his house? <laughs> that's why I'm doing that. 